In today's video, we're gonna do a Q&A session regarding the Monitor Plus app. I've made a couple of videos on this topic and you guys have a lot of comments and questions and suggestions and problems that we were solving through the comment section. So today I wanna to kind of compile everything together into those couple of most typical questions and I wanna share it with the wider audience. So let's start. I'm using, I'm using my laptop. I'm actually recording this straight on to a laptop and you can hear it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite loud, so please don't mind the noise. The first question that we're starting with is, can you connect the Monitor Plus app to a Canon or any other brand camera? Well, the short answer is no, because it's a Sony exclusive camera. And I think because Sony is very, it's, it's a very open company. They have the E-mount, which is open. And I think the protocols for data sharing and file transfers and stuff like this, USB connecting and stuff like this is also, I think, quite open. So. In my opinion, that's why the Monitor Plus app only works for Sony cameras. So it's a Sony camera exclusive app. The second question that I wanna point out is when you have an iPhone or an iPad or an Apple device and you wanna connect it to your camera with a USB cable. Now that of course is not going to work because USB connection is only possible for Android devices and you can connect your camera to an Apple device only through a wireless connection. So now if you have an Alpha 7 III like I have, you have a problem because the A7 III is kind of an older camera even though it's a very popular camera, it's not the newest one, which means that it's not supported by the app for a wireless connection. Therefore, if you have an iPhone and an A7 III, you cannot put these two things together because wireless doesn't work for the Alpha 7 III and the wired connection doesn't work for iPhone. So yeah. The third question I wanna answer here is when you're connecting your camera and your smartphone with a USB cable and the camera is supported and the smartphone is supported but you cannot connect them together, the app doesn't recognize the camera. Well, there's a couple of issues here which we were solving through the comments you know, one by one and I wanna compile them all together into this one answer. So first you need to set the protocols on the camera and on your smartphone to be able to send and receive information. So on the Sony camera, you need to set your USB setting to PC remote. Don't leave it at auto because that's just going to go to MTS, I think it's MTS, which is basically like a fast share download um, of the images to your computer. And if you use the mass storage, then that just basically opens up your memory card. So you need to set this to PC remote, which then means that the camera can send and receive information in order to be able to control the camera with your smartphone and to get the picture through the USB port. On your smartphone, you need to do the same thing. So set the USB setting to either PC remote or USB tethering or something like this. Don't use the mass storage or any other of the options. I don't know which smartphone you guys have. It might be different on different smartphones, but just make sure that you check all of them and see which one works if you're not really sure. Another thing that's related to this specific topic is your smartphone needs to be OTG compatible if you're connecting it using a USB cable. Now OTG means on the go connectivity and that's something that Android has over the Apple a little bit better because Apple devices are all closed all up on each other. You know, the Apple devices work really, really well, but I was never an Apple user because they always work well with each other, so they never connect well with any other of the devices. Maybe this has changed you know, nowadays, but when I started my smartphone career back in the day when iPhone came out, you couldn't even Bluetooth connect it to anything else except another iPhone. Um, I hope that's changed now. Now let me know down in the comments. So Android has kind of an advantage in this area, which means that if you have an OTG compatible smartphone, you can connect any sort of USB cable, USB A, USB micro or anything else with an OTG adapter to your, for instance, USB-C port on your smartphone. So all these USB protocols are working on an Android device. Therefore, you know, your Android smartphone needs to be OTG compatible and you can then connect it with a wire to your camera. But if you're not sure if the smartphone that you have is OTG compatible, best just search online, just Google it or search on YouTube. There's probably a video for your specific phone on this OTG specific topic. So make sure to check that out. And you probably received like a adapter from USB-A to USB-C or something like this um, along with your phone when you bought it. For a wireless connection, you just use the QR code. So, you know, control with the smartphone 
smartphone and then use the QR code and that should kind of register. I, I haven't used this, so I'm not really familiar with this, but there wasn't a lot of questions on this topic. So I'm guessing you guys didn't really have a lot of problems and you know, but there was an issue that I got some really cool feedback from one of you guys where you had a problem where everything was the way it's supposed to be with a wired connection to an Android device, but the app still didn't recognize the camera. The camera just didn't show in the app. Now what you figured out and thanks for sharing is that if you switch your camera to photo mode, so to manual aperture priority program or shutter priority, then the camera was able to be registered with the app and then you can switch it to movie mode. So just for that first time, for that first registration, you had this problem. And I think when I was registering my camera, to this app I think I had it in photo mode actually so I mean if you guys have trouble with this maybe try to set the camera to photo mode first and then it might work so let me know down in the comments if this was your specific issue and for the final question which is kind of weird and I'm not trying to make fun of the person who had this issue but everything was in order with their wired connection but they had a black screen so you went into live view and there was nothing. And for those of you guys who follow me on the channel know that I'm really freaking out whenever I see a black screen on my display, on my camera or on my you know, monitor now uh, because my Lumix G9 died last year and everything that I get from it is a black screen. So the sensor is not working. So that was kind of a, you know, okay. And that actually happens to me when I use the monitor app as well. And the reason in my case, which is really, really trivial, is that I forget to remove the um, lens cap off. So I know it's really weird, but it actually happens. Like, why is the monitor black? And then I'm like figuring out, oh yeah, the lens cap. And it happens to us all. So, you know, ju just admit it, you know, it's we're all in the same bucket when it comes to this. But there is also another reason why you might have a black screen when you power on everything, especially for the first time. And that is that you probably have your camera settings set to like a very fast shutter speed, a very closed down aperture, low ISO, maybe you were shooting photos outside and then you came indoors and you wanted to check the app for the first time. And of course, there was not enough light and maybe from all of the hype of connecting these things together, you just basically forget to you know, switch the um, or change the settings in your camera. And if you guys wanna learn about how the settings on your camera work, if you're new to photography and just wanna learn you know, what aperture, what shutter speed, what ISO does and how the camera actually is being operated or you have a friend who wants to learn, I'm gonna leave you with this video over here. You can click on this and enjoy. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.